Welcome back. I've got a good one for you today. We are freeze branding some Galloway cows. Freeze branding isn't typically something that's done by a vet. Normally it's a technician who's been trained in it. It's a really useful way of identifying cattle at a distance. In the video, I'll talk about why we offer it as a practice and also some of the benefits. Now, we're also PDing these cows, i.e. seeing if they're in calf. The farm in question is relatively new to cattle. It's a new enterprise. As ever, it's all a little bit nerve wracking before we get going. Scott, the farmer, has bought a Rigget Galloway bull from Southwest Scotland. Riggets, it's the first one I've seen. I think it's very nearly a first for YouTube. They are Galloways, but they tend to be of a more traditional type. And the Rigget in their name refers to the stripe along their back and under their belly. He's quite a small bull because of his type, but also because of his age. He's only about 18 months in this video. There were a couple of concerns about him being able to serve the cow simply from a mechanical point of view. Was he able to make the jump? If you want to find out how the little rigget got on, carry on watching. I hope you enjoy this video. It's one of our more remote farms, fantastic scenery, only about three or four miles from the Scottish border. As ever, if you're not subscribed to the channel, Go ahead, click subscribe, ring the little bell so you get notifications for new videos and feel free, if you like the video, to press the like button and also leave me a comment. All feedback is really useful. Without further ado, we'll get on farm. So I am no freeze branding expert. It's one of those things we do really to provide a bit of a service. We don't have a lot of dairy cows here in Northumberland, so there's not a lot of the same infrastructure. Uh, by that I mean there's not a lot of foot trimmers, there's not a lot of AI technicians, there's not a lot of people doing freeze branding. So it's something we like to offer. Personally I think it's a very useful thing to do if you have such a cows, especially if they're carving outside, but even if they're carving inside. Maybe we'll do a technical on that another time. But this is how I do it. I've got a well-worn polystyrene box that helps keep the cold in. Not very scientific, I know, but it's insulated. And then in there, I have my irons. So that's number two, as you can see. Got a pistol grip handle. These are from, I think it's North Dakota. ND, anyone? LH branding irons, Mandan, Mandan, ND. I think that's North Dakota. So. Got these two of each number. They're in a bath of IDA, which is this stuff. So IDA 99, I think that's 99% pure alcohol. Uh, we get that from Vet Sonic, who are good sort of veterinary agricultural wholesalers. And then um, in here, they've all dissolved by this point. Uh, there was dry ice, which of course is essentially frozen carbon dioxide. I think off the top of my head, that is minus 74 degrees Celsius. So the idea is the dry ice is, is your source of cold. The alcohol is what carries it onto the irons, is what allows the irons to bathe in that cold. And, and then you have your iron, which I think again is brass. You can tell I've read up, done my homework before this one, but I'm pretty sure it's brass. Um, that goes on the cow once she's been clipped. Give it a brush down little bit of spray with a bit more of the same stuff that's in here the IDA industrial denatured alcohol and then it goes on for somewhere between 40 to 60 seconds um, really works really well what we will do or what Scott will do when it comes to pre-carving sort of next spring he'll get his clippers out he'll clip up where the freeze brands are it just allows that freeze brand to be much more visible because you can imagine even though they're very obvious when the hair is clipped as the hair grows out they become a lot more indistinct and you can really do them on any color cow apart from white uh, but yeah black cows red cows dun cows we've done it, it on all sorts much more popular in dairy cows in the uk or in sort of cow calf operations in the states and canada uh, you can even get custom brands made if any of you have ever seen a raw burn aberdeen angus bull they're based not too far away in the scottish borders they have a characteristic love heart brand i suppose it's a brand in the original and the modern sense typically it takes about three months for brands to actually come through with white hair what i will do is i'll find some photos of ones i've done before and i'll show you a bit like blue peter i'll show you 
what they end up looking like. If we meet up with Scott again on the vlog, hopefully we'll be able to see my handiwork come out okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, this will be the this will be the way I think. What a lovely clean clean crush this was. Clean crush this was. Uh, could you fetch the goggles off the back of the truck, please? They'll be in the blue, big blue box. Uh, there's 10, there's 10 2019 cows, mm -hmm. like this one, and 10 2020 mm -hmm. cows. Cool. And That's it. I've had, who's, who, Joe, Jack was wearing these before, I'm not sure he's got a smaller head than me. So she is in, and she's and she's she's she probably won the first cycle. So. so that's the first cow through the crush in calf. The farmer Scott here can breathe a sigh of relief that his bull isn't a total dud. We'll see how we get on for the other nine. Now we know she's in calf, we can crack on and do the freeze branding. I've got Lucia, the vet student here, helping me getting everything prepped. What is the purpose of freeze branding? It is one means of identifying cattle. In the UK, we are very good at keeping track of individual animals. That is for a few different reasons, but they are primarily related to food safety and also animal health. Each bull, cow, heifer, steer, calf has its own passport and our farmers would face pretty hefty fines and penalties if those records are found to be faulty. Tags are the primary means of identifying cattle. However, they're not perfect. Tags fall out and they fall out far more often than many of our farmers would like. Of course, unlike a tag, a freeze brand is not going to fall out. You may well be asking yourself, does freeze branding hurt the cow? Now, I think that's a really important question to ask. I asked it of myself. I think it would be disingenuous to suggest that freeze branding doesn't introduce a mild discomfort, but that does seem to quickly subside. The closest approximation I can give you is if you've ever been unlucky enough to have a Veruca on your foot as a child and have to wear the rubber sock of shame when you went swimming, you may well have had that Veruca or walked frozen off this is very similar. There's a brief period, perhaps 10 seconds or so of discomfort that quickly subsides and the animal settles down. It's much less aversive and much less painful than what you might be familiar with, which is hot branding. Hot branding is illegal in the UK. You cannot do it, it's too painful. In terms of discomfort, I would consider freeze branding to be around about on a par with putting in an ear tag. So we're getting on well. Uh, Touchwood PD results have been good. This bull, like I said before, is Scott's stock bull. Has he got a name, Scott? Adder. Adder. That's, that's uh, a good name. And he's from near Castle Douglas in Dumfries and Galloway. He's quite a young bull, as you can tell by his size. Although these Galloways are really, even for Galloways, pretty small. Um, but so far, he seems to be doing a good job for a bull who's only, only about 18 months old. So, carry on in that vein. So I, I just wanted to show you uh, Scott's setup, and it's still a relatively new enterprise, but it's got a good stock cube. So this is Richie. And what I like about it is I don't know the name for this device, but you can see, oh, you can see this door pushes in, or if it was going the other way, it's closing in, pushes in and stops the animal trying to come back round within the circular forcing pen. Um, yeah, anyway, a good thing to have. Just while, just letting the vet student catch the uh, cow here. It's all good practice.
Perfect. Yeah. That's him. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> so this is the ball. You can see how little. If you got my vet student here, Lucia. Lucia, how tall are you? Uh, uh, 164 centimeters. 164 centimeters, whatever that is in feet and inches. That's that's our reference for the ball here, Ada. And he's only about 18 months old, but he's managed to get nine out of 10 of those Galloway cows in calf, which I think was a bloody good job considering the terrain <laughs> and, uh, and his relative, relatively small size. So good on him, he's just in, obviously he's not being freeze branded, but he's had his BVD vaccine. Very important to give breeding bulls their BVD vaccine. Um, but yeah, so he's done a, uh, Scott, are you pleased? Yeah, very happy. Yeah, good, very happy. excellent, good. Uh, we'll let him back because he had his vaccine and he can, uh, continue to live out his bachelorhood. He's a nice looking animal actually, isn't he? He is quite handsome. He's going to the pad, the bachelor pad. <laughs> so I should have said, so he's going back to his bachelor pad with his, his little mate. With his friend, yeah. With his friend. Half rigged, half belty. Again, really important thing to do to pull the bull away from the cows at some point so you don't end up bulling cows very late, even all year round. You end up calving all year round. That creates its own issues. Um, so he's only been in for about 12 weeks, which isn't bad. <clears throat> in a perfect world, bulling would be something like nine weeks, but it's not a bad start at all for 12 weeks. Um, so yeah, he's going off to retire for the rest of the year and he'll come back out when he's needed. It's not a bad life, I would say. Next year he's have to do. All right, so Scott was just saying next year he'll have 20 to do, so I've double the workload. I'm sure he'll manage. <laughs> Actually, a good uh, yardstick for, for young bulls, um, although plenty of people will go over this, is um, not to give them more cows than their age in months. So a 15 month old bull, you'd be fairly safe giving him 15 cows. It's always a good idea to do a pre-breeding soundness examination on any bull, but certainly in young bulls. Um, 
But yeah, that's a good rule of thumb. Aging months, numbering cows. That's enough for me. There's the cows over there. Lucy is washing up. I suppose I should start tidying up. So, catch you next time.